On 10th September 2013, the trial in the case, the prosecutor versus William Samoy Ruto and Joshua Arab Sang opened in the presence of the accused before trial chamber 5A at the International Criminal Court in The Hague, the Netherlands. Mr. Ruto and Mr. Sang are accused of the following crimes against humanity, murder, deportation, or forcible transfer of population and persecution. These crimes were allegedly committed in Kenya in the context of the 2007-2008 post-election violence. The trial is held before Trial Chamber 5A, which is composed of presiding judge, Judge Chile Ebo Osuji, Judge Olga Herrera Cabuccia, and Judge Robert Fremer. The trial opened with the reading of the charges against William Samoy Ruto and Joshua Arab Sang. Upon receiving confirmation from each leading defense counsel, presiding judge, Judge Chile Ebo Osuji, was satisfied that the accused understood the nature of the charges. William Samuel Ruto, you have been charged in count one with murder constituting a crime against humanity under Article 71A and Article 253A of the Rome Statute. How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. And in count two, how do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Count three, how do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Thank you very much. You may resume your seat. Joshua Arab Sang, you have been charged in count four with murder constituting a crime against humanity under Article 71A and Article 253D of the Rome Statute. How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. In count five, how do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. And in count six, how do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Thank you very much. You may resume your seat. The court's prosecutor, Fatu Bensuda, and senior trial lawyer, Anton Steinberg, took the floor for opening statements. The case we are about to commence concerns the individual criminal responsibility of the two accused, Mr. William Samuel Ruto and Mr. Joshua Arab Sang. This is, Mr. President, for the roles they are alleged to have played in the terrible crimes committed against the Kenyan people during the 2007 post-election violence. The prosecution asserts that the two accused, Mr. William Ruto and Mr. Joshua Arab Sang, are among the most responsible for the crimes of murder, of persecution, and deportation that occurred in the Rift Valley. And this is not a trial of Kenya or of the Kenyan people. It is not about vindicating or indicating, indicting one or other ethnic group or political party. It is not about meddling in African affairs. This trial, Mr. President, Your Honors, is about obtaining justice for the many thousands of victims of the post-election violence and ensuring that there is no impunity for, the, for those responsible, regardless of power or position. The prosecution's senior trial lawyer, Anton Steinberg, presented a more detailed outline of the evidence and witnesses that the prosecution will present in support of the charges. He used various visual aids, such as photos and maps. 628 persons are participating as victims in the case and are represented by their legal representative. Wilfred Derito, the common legal representative of victims, gave the opening statements on behalf of the victims in this case. In his presentation, he emphasized the victim's right to meaningful participation and expeditious process and reparation. I begin this opening statement by quoting from a victim, 
and I quote, the only right I had and the only mistake I made was to have been present at the scene of commission of the crime, unquote. And it is fashionable to hear virtually every other day that, quote, Kenyans have moved on, unquote. Meaning that they have uh, decided to abandon any avenues for justice and instead have chosen to forget the atrocities committed in 2007, 2008. This begs the questions, one, who are those Kenyans who have moved on? On behalf of Mr. Ruto's defense team, Principal Counsel Karim Khan delivered opening statements. In his presentation, he used several video extracts from media interviews given by Mr. Ruto. But Your Honours, the whole life of Mr. William Ruto, his passion, his commitment, his objectives, his spirit, has been his testament for a brighter Kenyan future, a cohesive, united Kenya, marching forward not as a disparate group of ethnic communities, but as one people under one flag. Your Honours, we say that there is a rotten underbelly of this case that the prosecutor has swallowed hook, line, and sinker, indifferent to the truth, all too eager to latch on to any version, any account, any story that somehow ticks the boxes that we have to tick in relation to putting forward a summons or putting forward uh, a confirmation hearing, completing an IDAC chart. Your Honor, no semblance to reality at all. On behalf of Mr. Sang's defense team, Principal Counsel Kipchumba Kigen Katwa delivered opening statements. Uh, we insist on the innocence of Mr. Sang and we insist on the position we've just indicated that whereas there is abandoned an infinite volume of evidence showing that in fact he is neither warmonger nor did he participate in any way in the violence, whereas that material is abandoned, there is not the least iota of any evidence incriminating him, either in terms of the prosecution having disclosed it or in terms of its existence, and the reason why we are confident of non-existence of anything incriminating him is because he didn't commit any, any wrong. At the end of the hearing, Mr. Joshua Arab Sang addressed the court. This is the man, Joshua Arab Sang, standing before this court today. In my entire life, I've never stood before any court because I am a law-abiding person. I've lived my life as a Christian with all the Christian values and that is shown by where I've worked and where I started my work as a broadcaster. But what to say, here I am. And I thank God that my innocence has given me enough courage to come this far. My God, my creator, has also given me that courage and the defense that I have. And I know one day, if this court will stand by justice, I'll be vindicated. I believe the judges before this court will hear and determine <coughs> all this one day and find this innocent journalist and will free the innocent journalist. The trial will continue with the testimony by the first prosecution witness on Tuesday, 17th September, 2013.